Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. A white man got full rock and rock out of there. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Oh, this hard got hit work to be this good. One more game. One more game. See what I take on your front, sir. I swear. You ain't my daddy, are you? There's going to be consequences and repercussions. What time is it? Game time, poof. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Don't Be Blase podcast coming to you live from the House of Pain otherwise known as Snap Fitness in the Adelaide CBD. I am your host, Speed Caruana, joined as always by Steve Burrows. Very nervous here. Uh, hello there. Hello. That's all I got. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, once again, folks, I let Steve have a bit of room to cook there. <laughs> and you've bottled the intro again, <laughs> mate. That is, you are over 2 on your comedy sketches. I think we, if you get a three, we, we might have to stop doing these intros. That, that was a comedy. That was me just being cautious because you, you killed me last time. Uh, actually, last three or four times, you've had a crack. Uh, I don't know what to say anymore. I, I, I actually have no idea. Well, quite honestly, this show probably would run a lot better if you didn't talk <laughs> at all. But <laughs> that does, that's, that's against the point. Anyway, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Larry and Lad. Go see the boys in Region Arcade. Get yourself a, a sweet coffee. Listen to some awesome tunes. But for now, on with the show. Now, today's going to take a bit of a negative uh, negative approach. We, uh, we always discuss the things that we love and we're passionate about, and that's where we argue. But today, we're going to also argue about the things that we don't like. Most importantly, uh, athletes. So today's going to be the, the top players that we really, really dislike. Now, we're going to leave Michael Jordan out of this, <laughs> this week. I think we went uh, a, bit hard, a bit hard on the... Uh, the, the greatest of all time, as Steve would like to call it. You went ham. You went ham. I did go a little bit hard. They <laughs> dropped a few bombshells. So we will live. It'll be a Michael Jordan free zone today. But we're going to get something very similar because, Steve, I'm going to throw it to you because I, I know you're number one. It's a man that you've despised for a very long time. Yes. And I'll let you take the floor. Steve, who do you hate? I hate the one of your guys, uh, Kobe Bryant. Can't stand the guy. I knew, see, I knew that you were going to say that. Dreadful what? human being. Well, why is he a dreadful human being? Um, <laughs> let's, let's, let's not get fired. Let's not get the show taken off the air. I think I, I almost, we're on thin ice after last week, so let's just try to keep it to the parameters of sport. Yes, yes. <laughs> why do you dislike Kobe Bryant? I hate Kobe Bryant uh, because of the person he, he portrays or he, he's portrayed. He, the dude's a douche, 100% douchebag on the court. Off the court, couldn't say, yeah, you know, he... he uh, Although <laughs> a court case with him and uh, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly doesn't um, really uh, back up any case that he's a good guy. But as far as uh, just leave that aside, just on the basketball court alone, just can't stand the guy. And I hate the fact that people like him. Okay, but what's I see I, for a man that loves Michael Jordan. Sure. And for a man that loves Carmelo Anthony, <laughs> I don't get how you can hate Kobe Bryant because essentially he is the amalgamation of those two. Admittedly, he tried to copy Michael Jordan. We all know this. We'll let that one go. That's a dead horse. It's been flogged too many times. But on court, the, the ball hogging, yes, I get that. The freezing out teammates, yes, I get it. He, he's... <laughs> well, you're doing my job for me if I was there. <laughs> Mate, like, as a diehard Lakers fan, I was forced, almost against my will, much like that girl in Colorado, to... <laughs> <laughs> Too like Kobe Bryant. I just, you know, I had to accept him as my boy, you know, and because he was played for my team. And we've discussed how passionate I am about my teams. Unlike you, who will just jump <laughs> flimsily to from team to team as long as you're on the right player. I will stand by my team, and even I even cheered for Kwame Brown for fuck's sake. Oh wow, we. <laughs> yeah, I will cheer for my boys if they play for my team. You know, I was a Kwame fan when I was a Washington Wizards fan for two years. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah, you yeah. jumped on the two years that Michael <laughs> Jordan was there. Like that, Michael Jordan free zone. Yeah, but it, I just don't get how you can you can hate. Kobe Bryant for the way he plays, but then sure. you can also be so complimentary of Carmelo Anthony. Well, look, it goes back to um, when him and Shaq were playing. Um, I think we've discussed this before, but uh, just the total lack of respect for Shaq. And, the, and you know, I, I remember you said, yeah, yeah, Shaq was fat. I get that. But uh, Kobe is a fat dick. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it, man. The guy. Look, and it's funny because when, when you hate someone, 
you just start looking for everything about them. You know, anything that comes up, you're like, man, that dude's a dick. Look how he's eating his sandwich, man. What a, yeah. what a wanker. <laughs> uh, everything they do. Everything he do. does, yeah. man. So The way he scores 60 in his last game. <laughs> Even but, that. but finishes the game with an assist. Oh, I love that because that was, to me, that Did was he? Kobe giving the greatest fuck you <laughs> really? all the time. Takes 50 shots in the game, but yeah. finishes with an assist. I remember that. I remember, and I, you know, the whole time I was watching it, man, and I think you were tend to send me texts during it. I was like, man, I fucking hate this dude, man. Like, but only I, Kobe would do this. Exactly. He's such an arsehole. I think he was our arsehole. You know, yeah. like, like I discussed it in the other show that I did with Tim, which was a great show because you weren't here. How much, as much as I respected Luke Hodge's <laughs> game, I hated Luke Hodge because he was an arsehole. But I, I can understand how Hawthorne fans loved him because he's their arsehole. Right. Same thing with me with Kobe Bryant. I get why everyone else hates yeah. him. But he's my arsehole, you know? And, like, and so yeah. when he scored 60, and I just love the fact that he scored 60 because Shaq said, I bet you can't get 50. Yeah, so yeah, he goes yeah. out and scores 60. That's 60. that's the kind of arsehole I loved. Yeah, yeah, fair call. Yeah, basically, look, he just, everything he does bugs me. Um, look, I'm not doubting the dude's skills. He's an unbelievable player. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, look, every, every time he drives to the hoop and he missed, he's calling a foul. Yeah. You know, uh, every time something happens, he goes, you know, it's not his fault. Um, yeah, I remember, remember that year, I think it was around 2005, 6, 7, facts something like that, matter. facts don't matter, and he was bagging out one of your dudes on YouTube, he was bagging out Steve Nash, man, I can't remember, he was bagging out someone, I was like, when does this guy stop, man, he was bagging someone out, I was he's like, just ultra competitive, he's and he always wanker. wanted to win, that was his issue, he always wanted to win, but unfortunately for Kobe, he just couldn't win by himself, I mean, literally, no one really has no won one does, so. okay. but he really took it to a different level, like, the, they always point out, oh, Kobe scored 62 and three quarters against the Mavericks. They, they had a losing record that year. I and mean, he scored, like I think, 50 in like four straight games. But we didn't make the playoffs that year. That's right. Like, it was just, it was horrible. And that was a time that was really hard to defend him. That's <laughs> right. I had to defend him. Like I said, I, I'm staunch for my team, so I tried to defend my team. I tried to defend him, but I couldn't do it. Mm. But... I, I just I don't get the hatred of him from you, yeah. Specifically because you love Carly and I, Anthony. No, no, well, yeah. Well, I don't. It's not even about the hogging that it bothers me. It's it, it's a whole it's a it's a package deal with him. Um, like I said, it started with the Shack thing, and then you start with noticing everything he does, which is wrong, uh, or in my opinion, wrong. And then and then you start hearing the fans, yeah. And the fans start going, "Oh, he's better than Jordan." I was like, "What?" Well, 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 no, no. As as much as I do dislike Michael Jordan, as much as I love my Lakers and Kobe, you know, I never jumped on that side. I, you never. But the fact that you like to rub into me during the <laughs> 2008 finals, because oh, yeah. that was the Lakers versus uh, Celtics. Oh yeah. And Game Six. Yeah. In the Garden. Oh yeah. Before, I, folks, I hadn't even watched the game. This is back in the day where you had to, like, I actually had to get it on tape. I didn't have pay TV, didn't have cable, so I had to get it on tape. This is another story I'll tell you another time, but the girlfriend I had at the time, really lousy at delivering sports games to me, but that's another story for another time. But just yes, going through the Kobe game, now he's having a stinker in game six, and we're getting absolutely smashed too. And Steve could not wait to text me, hey, 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 hey listen to the Boston crowd when Kobe's at the foul line. <laughs> listen to what they say. They're chanting, you're not Jordan, you're not Jordan. Okay, I get it, Steve. <laughs> he's not Jordan. It's my ringtone, man. It is. It's my ringtone. I love that. All right, I love, I love that you can rub that into me, because that's going to go into mine, okay? Yeah. I hate the Boston Celtics, based purely off... Well, not purely off that. I mean, the rivalry between Lakers and Celtics, but I hated Paul Pierce yeah. off that 2008 finals. And he won finals MVP that year, but he also won biggest <laughs> douchebag of the year MVP <laughs> for the game one incident with the wheelchair. Now, you've seen it. I've shown it to you. Yeah, explain. You yeah, you explain keep forget it. Yeah, you know, when yeah. it comes to the Kobe stuff, you remember, oh, in, in uh, 2001, <laughs> at the, the 15 minute mark of the second quarter, he did this. You, know, like, you remember everything you hate about Kobe. You don't sure. remember Paul Pierce being an absolute fuckwit no. in game one of the finals where he went down, oh, my knee hurts. This is the end of my life. He's laying on the floor. He had to get three teammates to carry him off with the pain on his face. Oh, oh, yes. He gets carried to the back and he's getting in a wheelchair going through the halls of the Boston Garden. Oh my God, it's the end of his career. Oh, this great Celtics legend. How long did it take till he came back on the course, Steve? Yeah, Q, 90 seconds. <laughs> 90 seconds. <laughs> now, we had a knee brace on. That definitely would have fixed it all. And then he comes out, hits two, three, four. You're a fuck it, this. You, uh, that's, a, that's a reality thing. Like we, oh, I'm going to get spicy again. When you got stabbed, probably deserved it. Oh, <laughs> 
Well, look, I mean, I've seen those kind of injuries in pro wrestling. I remember when Hulk Hogan jumped in the, in the semi-trailer and ran through The Rock, who was in the ambulance at the time. The Rock was back next Monday. But he had a bandage on his wrist, he, he had a bandage on his wrist. <laughs> I can pull pieces that type of superhero that uh, to The Rock's level. Now he can just, he can shake off he can a, shake an ACL. Can he? <laughs> he can shake off an ACL. <laughs> Mate, you thought his knee was going to get taken, like he's going to get his leg <laughs> amputated from the knee down the way he was carrying on. Paul Pierce, I fucking hate you. But, you know, we're going to move on to to another, and this isn't one that I don't get. This is another one that Steve dislikes. Like I'm very passionate about the ones I dislike too, but the ones Steve dislikes don't make any sense to me. Okay. I've got, I've got two words for you, like a name. <laughs> one name. One name. Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson. Yeah, dude, dude um, once again, look, <clears throat> I don't hate Clay Thompson okay. per se. I just hate... <laughs> I just hate Clay Thompson. <laughs> yeah. I hate his game. Yes. Uh, look, the dude looks like a nice guy, but he, <laughs> he, his game is what bugs me. And the fact that uh, observers actually rate his game higher than... He, he's like he's very overrated. He's kind of like, the, I guess what I would suggest is the Beatles of uh, the... Well, don't, uh, don't, get, don't, <laughs> Steve, don't get me started on the Beatles again this week. We're going to leave the, the Beatles. are going to sit with Michael Jordan on the bench this week. Don't, don't start me off. Don't, I'll, 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 I'll take out all your fronts. Take, all the right. fronts take the fronts out. Look, the guy, like my little brother, man, he's a huge Clay, Clay fan. And, and every time he plays, I can just pick holes in the dude's game. Uh, he's got no... He can't shoot off the dribble. Like he's, he's one of the best shooters. Don't get me wrong. Spot up shooter, the dude yeah. is awesome. But you know what? So is Carl Corver. Mm. You know, there's a lot of people who are. I think he's just he's, he's in a luxury of being in the best team. Yep. Where he can spot up uh, for three, 12 times a game, mm-hmm. and he hits half of them. Mm. Great. He's, look, he's a good shooter. Sounds pretty good. But the dude is overrated. Yeah, they talk about how good his defense. Get the fuck out of his defense. His defense man. is solid. He is solid. Six, seven, okay. I'll take solid. Six seven with long arms. He he does play a role. The thing is, that's the thing. Like, I don't know how you can nitpick that Warriors team because they all play their role. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he doesn't shoot up the dribble. He doesn't need to shoot up the dribble. But he tries and, he, and he tries to do it 10 times a game and he bricks 9 out of 10. And, I'm, scored, and that's just another reason. Scored 37 reason. and a quarter, but you know. Uh, <laughs> fastest guy to like 60 points or whatever. Um, he, he can't. He, dude he, gets hot. The dude gets hot. And exactly. He, yes, but, but he that's not his role. good. He feels, no, no, I, you know how I feel about guys that can just get hot randomly because I'm going to bring up J.R. Smith again. Oh, my God. But, and I know you hate J.R. as well. <laughs> okay, there you go. What, J.R. versus Clay? Tell me the difference. That, okay. Well, I hate J.R. Clay's a lot better than J.R. I'll give you that because J.R.'s an absolute knucklehead. But I still love him, so... You're not gonna you're not gonna turn me on that one, but <laughs> but Clay plays his role for that team. You know, what I mean, like you've got your 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 point guard that's that's running the show in yes. Steph. You've got Kevin Durant who just does everything. You've got your big stiff white guy in the middle, Zaza. You know, they Could can chuck him yeah, I still love Bogut. I wish they never oh, lost Andrew dude. Bogut. Bogut, not just the Australian thing, but he is just one of the most underrated players. If he and it's one of those big ifs. If he wasn't so injury prone, yep. he would have gone down maybe top twenty center of all time. Like he was oh, shit. Top, if he wasn't injured all the time. Right. He was but I mean top twenty centers. How many centers do you know that are that great? Um are there a lot in the nineties probably. A lot yeah, in the nineties, right. yeah, a couple of early ones. Yeah. But yeah, top yeah. twenty, I reckon he would have made he okay. would have had, as it, had he had a conversation. He had a whole career of no injuries. I mean, that injury at the Bucks where he broke his arm was possibly one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen outside Sean Livingston's leg. But I just wanted to see like see him do more. I wish he I wish he one of those things that I know they got Kevin Durant in, but I wish they could have figured out a way to keep Bogan. Andrew Bogan in. It's not even like I said, he doesn't score a lot. He yeah. gets maybe eight or nine rebounds a game. But it's the fact that he can he's he's more than happy to contest a dunk. Yeah. Which so many people are so scared of getting dunked on. Hundred percent, yeah. And oh you got posterized. Who gives a shit? That's yeah. your job is yeah. to try to contest that, make it uncomfortable for the guy dunking. And his passing. Oh, and screen work is yeah. amazing. If you know, actually watching the game, it, it opens up so many things, and it opens up a lot of jump shots for one K Thompson. Yeah, exactly. And backdoor cuts. Exactly. Clay Thompson has a lot of laps. Uh, no credit to Clay Thompson though, because but uh, you've got to put yourself in that right position, and Clay does that. He's a, he's an NBA basketball player. Yes. Every NBA basketball player should be able to do a backdoor cut yeah. and they should be able to shoot an open jump shot. But that's the thing, like, they shoot and a lot of them can't. But Clay <laughs> can on a consistent basis. He can because he plays with Steph Curry. Yes. Uh, who... Oh, don't get me wrong. If Clay was on a team where he was the focal point, yes. he wouldn't be as highly rated. He, he, yeah, that's right. He would get killed because he can't create his own shot. 
Yeah. He cannot create his own shot. And that once I said, like I said, I don't hate on Clay Thompson. I hate the fact that he's uh, rated as uh, or regarded as highly as he is. And that's all my point. It's like Draymond Green. You Ooh. know, the dude, the dude keeps getting accolades, which I think he's just, you know, he, he's, he wants to get, I'm not, <laughs> I'll, I'll throw it out again. He's overrated, man. The dude in a, in a different team. Sorry, man. Is this Warriors slander? Is this is this wouldn't have anything to do with the fact that the Warriors, this Warriors team, has been considered better than your your know, your fabled '96 Bulls? No, no, they're not, and uh, because that's just ridiculous. Uh, even throw, maybe we should have an argument about that one. Though. Well, let's let it go. But uh, <laughs> maybe we should. But um, okay, last week apparently I had veins coming out of my head, but this Steve. Steve <laughs> Started the show with, I don't think I hate that many things, but the, the passion coming through him now. Dude, it's like anything, man. It's like dudes who get regarded higher than they should. Um, it's, it's like, uh, what's the dude who plays for um, the Crows? Oh, uh, which one? I hate a lot of the other Yeah, uh, Tom Lynch. Tom Lynch? Tom Lynch. The second best Tom Lynch in the league. I do love that. That's, hey, that's yours, man. I stole it. I'm not going to lie. That's yours. I'll give you credit. That is one of my favorite heckers of all time. <laughs> It's, the, it's probably the only time in AFL history that you that some person can actually be the second best player in the league with the same name. That's right. <laughs> and he and he does it well. And he and if there was a third Tom Lynch, he'd probably be third best. <laughs> he's a dreadful footy player. He, I was just even coming in here when we talked to that, that a young lad out the front, and uh, he looked at me crazy like, "But Tom Lynch is a good player. He's Get terrible. the fuck out of here." <laughs> He sucks, man. I can't, and, and it bugs me that people rate him. But the thing is, is this just a? It's a long list of very overrated Adelaide Crows forwards. I mean, you know me, I hate the Adelaide Crows, right. and I. But the thing is, I can still respect their players. You know, and I. Yeah. We we discussed in, a, in, a, in another. This is ages ago. We've discussed it, but one of my favorite players of all time is Andrew McLeod, Shit, and he's yeah. one of the greatest Crows of all time. And yep. I, I know I can take out, you know, your, your Rashudo, your Tyson Edwards, you yep. know. Yeah, Ben Hart's, Nigel Smarts, that sort of thing. Like, all these Crows players, even some of the new boys. I'm a huge fan for Jakey Lever. Oh, I went that's going to be a big loss. But Taylor Walker and Tom Lynch (laughs) can go jump in the fucking torrents. Like, (laughs) they're the most... Like, okay, Tom Lynch is just straight up fucking useless. If if he was anywhere else, he wouldn't get a touch. Like, he's lucky the fact that the, the teams have to look after the world's... Well, the AFL's biggest fake tough guy in Taylor Walker, <laughs> Josh Jenkins, and oh, yeah. the one that breaks my heart, Eddie Betts. Oh. They're focused on those three, that this like absolute shitbag can just run around and just clean up empty balls and, oh, he, you know, he kicked 10 goals once yeah. against GWS in their first year playing against fucking like, 16-year-olds. That's yeah. like me and you going out and playing, oh, like, or like me, yeah. when I used to coach, I used to coach under 12s basketball. And we used to play little pickup games at training, and I would join in. It's like me going, oh, yeah, I scored fifty against these kids. <laughs> like, I, I hope you did. Take some oh, little pumps yeah, or less. Yeah, no, no, I did make it easy for him. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, dude. That's the thing, man. He, he he's a legitimate. He he, he was what. Well, <laughs> and sorry, Tom Lynch, you're probably listening, but uh, he's a scavenger, man. He he's he's terrible one on one. Yep. He kind of hang. What he does, he kind of hangs around the the outside. You know, mm-hmm. he looks for the scraps, and they call that link up play. That's what dudes like. They go, he's the best link up. Get, he's not a link up dude, so this, man. This will tie me into the like. Yeah, Daniel Daniel Pierce was very much in that vein. Former Port player, played yeah. at the Fremantle Dockers. He's what we call a genuine outside outside player. If he yeah. had anyone standing within two meters of him, he he didn't want part of it. Yeah, I don't think in his career, I don't think he even had one hard ball get. No, yeah, but he had plenty of handball receives, and that's all he was ever looking for. <laughs> dude, I've got a drinking uh, game with my mate who um you know basically he drinks if tom lynch does something shit uh, i'll drink if he does something above afl standard yep and if he does something about afl standard well, you know like if he if, if he handballs it to a running player then that's nothing but if he shanks a kick that goes 15 meters yep. off the side of the boot then he's drinking and so on and so forth um, the dude's on his third step, man. Uh, he's on his third step, man. He's got a problem. The wife's kicked him out. It's a fuck. It's a mess. He's got kids. I'm sad. I'm, I'm really sorry that we started it. But the dude, and it's Tom Lynch's fault, man. That he's your friend's an alcoholic. Dude, it, it's bad. It's no, bad. It's, no, bad. it's, no, it's, it's sad. Now we're gonna get into a bit more AFL here, just to, to stay on the Adelaide Crows. You said, like I said once again, you said at the start of the show you didn't hate anyone, <laughs> but I think I'm gonna drop a name now. Who do you hate more, right? Tom Lynch, yep, or Scott Welsh? <laughs> well, Scott Welsh is also uh, in the in the highly uh, overrated. Uh, cause he, he top led. Yeah, I think he led 
goal scorers for us one year or something. I think, like I think two years you oh, let really? yeah, he let goal scorers. But so did Ronnie Jamison. Ronnie Jamison did it in the, in the 90s and that dude was a full back and they went, who the fuck have we got, man? Like, yeah, but pre Modra. It's, it's one of those things that in footy, for some reason, the ends of the park do link up. You right. can move a guy from full back to full forward and they yeah. tend to... I mean, look at Fraser Gary. Yeah. The big dude train. Or Ellen, who... Oh, was it Ellen who kicked five? Shane Ellen in the, the, grand, in the grand final. Yeah, let's not talk about the Crows doing well. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> let's get back to the shit plays from the Crows. because <laughs> that's, that's my hot topic. Oh, I'm really good. If I had a special subject on one of those quiz shows, yeah, yeah. Crows players that I hate. And Scott Welsh was one of those guys. He would do... Less than fuck all for yeah. three quarters. Yeah. He kicked maybe one goal in the first quarter off a free kick that he yeah. didn't deserve. Yeah. And then the Crows would be winning by 10 goals and the Crows would be losing by 10 goals. But yeah. in junk time, he'd kick three more goals. Shit, yeah. Now, you look at the box score at the end of the game, Scott Welsh, four goals. They're not four fucking goals. Nah. This is where, like, in life, facts don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, man. <laughs> because you look at, like I said, led the, the goal scorer for yeah. the Crows... But he was fucking useless. Nah, he sucked, man. But you have to give me, you have to tell me, down the line, with your real heart for oh, your fuck crows. Lynch, man. Fuck Lynch. Lynch, man. Oh, yeah, he, he's, he's still, he's, I see it every weekend, man. The, the, I had a real, I had a highlight when he, when he dropped out, and I feel bad because I'm saying it because he was sick, but dude, man, you know, like when he sat out for two or three games because he had a, some form of illness, yep. they didn't upset me. Yeah, they didn't upset sure. me, no. You're, no, not sending, you know. you're not sending... <laughs> no, 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 get well cards. No, no chicken soup sending his house now. <laughs> Wouldn't even send flowers to his funeral. No, <laughs> no, no. Dude, it reminds me of um, a Nathan, uh, Nathan Bock. Yeah. Same thing, man. A, a highly overrated footy player. Who? It, it was during that time when, um, I think it was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was around the time when um, they were coming out of flooding or some shit. Remember, flooding was a big thing. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Then they, they threw an extra man in the back. And Nathan Box always sat at a half-back flank. He was, yeah, loved not playing on a genuine, like being the loose man. He was yeah. a loose man. And he got it. And, and, and the same thing, like you said, box score, man, 35 touches. Yeah. Anyone could, any dude, anyone could play in that role and get 35 touches, and then what happened, you, you saw what happened there, he got signed, I think he got signed to the Gold Coast or something like yep. that, I can't remember if he even played any games. He played man. about 15 games. Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was... and totally exposed for the bum that he was. So, Lynch is probably my number one hate. I'm a Crows fan, yeah. you know this. Man. Yeah, oh, that's, that's, uh, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's the only time I can ever get genuine passion out of Steve. If he loves something, and yeah. something ruins his love for something, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only way it's going to set him off. But, that's a, it's a bigger subject you're talking about there is, is that stats, you know, fact, it's a, one of our mottos for the show, facts don't matter. Right. Stats are so misleading these days. Shit, yeah. And like you know, AFL ones, like I said, possessions can be a big thing. Like at the moment, our, our reigning Brownlow medalist is uh, Patrick Dangerfield, who's the king of picking up the ball 40 times, but he's also the king of shanking it 25 of those times. And But the thing is, people look at the stats. I mean, you look at yeah. last year's grand final, which was an amazing game. Johannesson picks up the uh, Norm Smith. He had 38 touches or something, but 20 of them were clangers. Yeah. Now, I'm not just salty on this because I had money on Tom Boyd for the Norm <laughs> Smith, and Tom Boyd is a fucking dreamboat and should have won, <laughs> won his rightful trophy. It's the best game he's ever played. But it's just numbers these days. Like mm. People are so tied into... And this is... I'm going to do a complete segue back to the NBA. The player that I've... Really, and this is going to annoy a lot of people, but one of the players I cannot stand right now is Russell Westbrook. Well, yeah, Westbrook, and, and I'm going to chuck Harden in there as well. Ooh. The two of them. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're the same thing. They handle the ball every offence. Yeah. So their stats are always going to be... In their uh, favour. That's right. Yeah. Well, the thing, the thing I can't stand about watching Russell Westbrook is because he just dribbles the air out of the basketball. I mean, when he chooses to dribble, not like when he played the Warriors and decided to just tuck the ball under the arm and walk up the court and then wondered why he got called for travel. <laughs> You're a fucking retard, mate. Um, <laughs> but it just, it just bugs me that... It's not, it's not the, I mean, admittedly, this is going to make it sound like an old man, but it's not the basketball that I grew up watching. It's not, it's just this isolation, one, and admittedly, this is going to get tied, once again, jump right back to the Kobe <laughs> thing. I mean, I hated watching Kobe because he just, once the ball got to him, it wasn't going anywhere else. And Westbrook's the same. I remember watching it, it was a playoff game. It was one of the uh, the Thunder, Thunder versus Rockets. So Harden and, and Westbrook. Yep. The last five minutes of the game was Westbrook dribble, 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 clank. Yep. And then Harden dribble, 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 clank. Yep. It was just hard to watch. The ball didn't move. And then you get a players like the teams like the Warriors that you yes. slandered earlier. <laughs> and they moved the ball. The ball moves. And the thing is they have players that are suited for the environment and the ball can move. Look, and let's just be clear. I love the Warriors. Yeah. I, I, I love the Crows and I don't like Tom, Tom Lynch. Yeah. And I love the Warriors but I don't like Clay Thompson. Yeah. 100% agree with you. And the Spurs. 
exactly the same oh, thing. Spurs, great. Spurs, they move the ball, and I, and I'm you know I'll I'll put myself in there as an old school as well. And, and I'll tell you, and this is, goes back to our LeBron and the other guys uh, that we won't mention yeah. argument last week is. That's what, another thing about LeBron. He's not part of the... And sorry, I'm sorry to spar out of here, but LeBron, he's a pick-and-roll dude. Yeah. Plays pick-and-roll, and, and for someone who like yourself who does appreciate that ball movement, he's the, he's the anti of ball movement. Ooh. Yeah, he kicks it at the end. Yeah. But literally, he'll be like, yep, come up high, you know, said center, set me a pick, I'll drive, and I'm either going to do one of three things. I'm going to drive, spin, move, lay up. Yep. I'm going to go left, pull up for a ugly jump shot, yep. or three, I'm going to kick it to uh, one of my five perimeter three-point shooters, and I'm kicking it to you in the corner. That is what LeBron James' game is. Um, and once again, I love LeBron James, hate the fans, which makes me start to not love LeBron James anymore, like I do with a lot of the people. Yeah, but that's okay. Okay, so we're not going to jump on LeBron, and you know. Oh, I think we just jumped on. Him. Yeah, but we're not going <laughs> to defend him, saying that maybe this is poor coaching, but okay. and he wouldn't play that type of game if he played first at the Spurs with Greg Popovich, or even Steve Kerr, or went to college. Oh, that's actually that's all. It's a... <laughs> <laughs> if he went to college, then I think you're fine. That's uh, a, that's a good topic for him. He uh, might have that, that's, that's, a, that's another topic all in itself. Yeah. I'm, I'm very passionate about the players that go to college and learn how to play basketball the right way. As a guy that coached, I mean, like I said, I coached junior basketball under yeah. 12. But teaching kids to play without the ball yeah. is very important. If you go straight from high school straight to the NBA, you miss all that playing, learning to play the game of basketball without the ball in yeah. your hand, which is really, really hard. If you're the dominant player in your team or your school or whatever, you're used to having the ball in your hand and learning to play. It's one of the hardest games to play without the ball in your hand, which is one reason why, like I said, Andrew Bogan again, loved him because the stuff he could do off the ball is is amazing, you know, yeah. but but this is, like I said, once again, getting off topic here, going to get back to my <laughs> hatred of Boston Westbrook. I, I, I love being a sneak LeBron in any conversation and, and trying to bag him out. Though. Yeah, that's all right, man. That's right. You're just taking pot shots. You're, you're petty. Oh, you are, petty. You're officially a petty. petty. It's going to be a receding hairline, by the way. Oh, 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 put that in there. You're fucking bald, man. <laughs> right. And like, Let's get off LeBron, back to Westbrook. I just don't dislike Westbrook. Sorry. The triple-double. Oh, dude. The fact that he won MVP yeah. this year yeah. over guys like, you know, James Harden, who, you know, led the league in, I think he led the league in assists, but it wasn't pretty. No. And he got the MVP over Kawhi Leonard. Right. And he got the MVP over, and which the guy who, let's be honest, you just bagged him out, but LeBron should be MVP every year. Well, yeah, I guess it's the same when Jordan played. He yeah, was, exactly. Like, I, I, as, much as, I, as much as I dislike Jordan, the fact they gave Karl Malone the MVP yeah. over Michael Jordan was purely, it was just, okay, we know Jordan's the best. Yeah. Who's the second best? Who's we'll the give best? them. Yeah, yeah, we'll give them the trophy because it, if we just keep giving it to the same guy every year. So, yeah. like I said, as much as I dislike Jordan, I'll give him credit. He was the best player, should have won MVP every year. But I feel exactly the same way about LeBron James. But the fact that you give it to Westbrook, yes, he averaged a triple double, which hasn't been done yeah. since the what 60s, 70s. That's right. But the fact that he broke the record substantially for turnovers, for turnovers, maybe? yeah, yeah, I was and say. couldn't even get his team out of the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. That shows to me it's like it's just a one man show. The fact that you watch the games and his teammates are boxing out so he can get rebounds yeah. on free throws. Yeah. It's just goose in the stats. It's just it's just fake stats. It's just a hundred percent, man. I, I totally agree with you. And and, that, and that's the problem. And that's that's on those who voted for it. Yeah. The media, who the fuck votes for that stuff. And that once again, stats stats rules a lot of people's minds. Mm. So I do to get thirty touches a game in footy these days. It, it's a, it's not a dime a dozen, but it's not the same as when you know Greg Williams did it. But, you know, exactly. Senior Carlin back in the day when, you know, and, or, you know, I'll say Andrew McLeod. I don't think Andrew McLeod ever got 30 touches, but he'd get 28, and 27 of them were beautiful and gold. Well, it's the same, you, with, as it may, I mean, this is going to be a rare time. I know we said we're going to leave him on the bench, but a rare time I'll praise Michael Jordan. His 30 points a game back then oh, was yeah. a lot more impressive than anyone scoring 30 now. 100%. And no one averages 30 now, but the amount of three-point shots that go up these days is ridiculous. And I think he hit maybe, what, 
Well, the fact that he hit five, what, seven or six eight, in the finals, six yeah. in the finals game, and that yeah. was like, oh my god, what's wrong with Michael Jordan? He's hitting all these threes. Yeah, you know, I mean, like the numbers these days. This is what okay, this is what I hate. <laughs> okay, that's all. Numbers in sports, one hundred percent. It's man. just it's overrated. It's like you said, you can see Westbrook. He, he averaged triple double, wins the MVP, but his team doesn't do anything. Oh, no. he doesn't have anyone he's playing with. No, he freezes out everybody by being such a selfish player. You know, yeah. I mean, like you see someone like Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, he doesn't get the assists, but he gets the rebounds. He gets the blocks. He plays yeah. defense. He plays, and he move, He plays within the team concept, and so his team is always successful. You know, even like a team like the Memphis Grizzlies. Everyone shits on the fact that Michael Conley got this huge oh. contract, but he's a great player because he plays within the frame of their team. Everyone in that team has a role. There's no one that's a standout scorer. There's no one that's standout flashy. But they've got five guys that will go on the court and play together and they always make the playoffs. Same way as the Spurs. Every year, Spurs are too old. They're not going to make the playoffs. Number two seed. Yeah. You know, like awesome. Every year. And these flashy players, like, yeah, oh, James Harden got this many points and this yeah. many assists and, oh, Russell Westbrook scored this guy. Who gives a shit? That's right. They're not winners. No. Yeah. They shoot at 41%. Yeah. They they turn the ball over seven, eight times a game. Ugh. You know, it's dreadful basketball. The, the thing is that they, they give that award for, I guess, who they consider the best player for the year. Not the most... And, and that's what undoes the award. It's actually called most valuable player. And that's why LeBron James probably should win it. Is because he is probably the most valuable player to any team at any time. He is yeah. the most valuable player. What he does you know, is is most valuable. Steph Curry is another one who's very valuable. I think if you're talking about Golden State, I don't think they're going to win. Uh, Kevin Durant in the finals was most valuable. He was. And that you uh, could see the value in Kevin Durant right. during that final series. As much as I was, you know, I love my LeBron and I was cheering for the Cavs, yeah. you could just see how important Kevin Durant was to that team. This is a very negative conversation. It is. But it we're going to turn it around. Because I, we're uh, happy... Well, can I just chuck in one more thing? Yep. Throw I, I hate commentators who then back up the players that we hate for the reason for and and disregard the reasons why we hate them. Yep. Like Tom Lynch, they keep and I'll bring him up again. They they he got nominated for the all fucking Australian team, the top forty. You're kidding. You're, I'm dead set, man. I was I was I was I was human. I can see that. I was human. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't even use the word human, dude. He was he was nominated in the top forty. Eight crows were. Yeah. And he was one of them. I couldn't fucking believe my eyes. Were, and, and my mate straight away says a bit text. Oh, he's a great player. Get, no, he's not. He's terrible. And, and, I hate, and I hate the fact that Cameron Ling is on him on Friday night footy. Fuck, he's the best link up. Fuck off, Cameron Ling. But you see, are above. He also falls into that. He says he's that great player in that forward line. Same way that I trashed Andrew Embley for being... Yeah, he gets that. He got that publicity because he was a, a great, quote unquote, great player with a great teammate. You put him by himself, he was useless. Sorry, Josh. I know you're listening. I know you've been trying to defend Andrew Edley, but he was fucking buff. You, yeah. know? Like, you take away the other three guys that take their attention, and he proved to be quite useless. You put Tom Lynch in a forward line by himself, yep. he's going to prove to be quite useless. Yeah. He was. Like, but I'll try to stop it before I Sorry, stop it now. I know, Steve, you're very... Does Tom Lynch owe you money? Like, <laughs> you're very passionate about this Tom Lynch thing. For a guy Sorry. that didn't want to do this topic to start the show, you're very passionate about these things that you hate. And maybe it's because you're a couple of beers in. I don't know. But we're going to segue into something that's going to help change your mood. Okay? So we love our lists on this show. So we're going to go through our top three comedies that's just going to change a shitty day. So if you're having a bad day, you come home from work and you're tired, you got rained on, or you're just having a, just a grumpy day and you need something to change your mood. Now, this is not the top three comedies of all time. I don't want to list bullies on Facebook to start messaging, you forgot to say this, go fuck yourself. This is the things that we watch that will change our mood. If we need to watch a movie, something easy, yeah. something you know, something that's going to make you happy, Steve, give me your top well, three comedies. Let's just say you just... Watch the crows and you saw Tom Lynch blow one. <laughs> Did you see the other week when he ran into open goal when he fucking shanked it? Just his... leave Tom Lynch. Anyway, we're done with Tom Lynch. Yeah, straight after that game, let me tell you, I went straight to the old DVD collection and I and I and I pulled out Life. Life. And we, we look. Well, yes, it's something that me and Speed have always talked about. Life is the most underrated comedy of all time. I will give you that. That life is brilliant. And it is brilliant. And it's not necessarily like it's not like a, a, I, I, I I sat down. I, Made my mum watch it one day, and then she didn't actually find it funny. She found it sad, oh, wow. actually. Yeah. So it's not one of those comedies which is obviously hilarious, where like you're slapping your knee. It's just so it's so well written and put together, and and uh, so well acted too. Oh, like, and some of the uh, the characters in there, like yeah. 
you miss Bernie Mac when you watch that. Uh, just the character he plays. Jing Lang, Jing Lang. <laughs> <laughs> just it has it has so many good. It's a, and it's one of those things that I love about movies. It's a feel good sort of movie. It's yeah. a comedy, but it. The story goes somewhere. My issue a lot with comedies these days is like Anchorman. Like the first time I saw Anchorman, I thought it was terrible because I was waiting for the story to progress and right. get somewhere. That's not what the movie's about. The comedies these days, it's just this is funny, this is funny, this is funny, this is funny, the end. Yeah. Whereas that movie, you know, it had a story, it had an arc and it got there in the end. And like I said, it, it was a heartwarming movie, it was a funny movie and that's why I really appreciate life. I feel that there's a lot in entertainment in general these days, mm. uh, particularly things that me and you like is wrestling. There's no story anymore. It's high spot, high spot, high spot. Wrap it up with another high spot. Yes, all clap and, and we all did flippy flips. Dreadful stuff. So uh, life is my number one. Um, number two, uh, I film that I, I watch over and over again and it's still funny is Happy Gilmore. I'll give you that. Happy it's Gil- so funny. Now, is Adam Taylor any good anymore? Or are we just- oh, he's good, all right. He's, we could have a whole other conversation about that. I think we will. Oh, yes. Let's have a, let's have a conversation about Adam Taylor. Maybe next time. <laughs> continue with your list. Uh, Happy Gilmore is so funny, uh, and Apollo Creed's in it, and uh, he's really good in it as well. <laughs> and number three is a film that a lot of people haven't heard, and I've actually gone to bat, <laughs> very, very similar to my Bone Thugs, is, uh, is MacGruber. The and what now? Mag- <laughs> what now? <laughs> Magruba. Okay. Mac Gruber. Check it out. Tell, tell what what is Magruber all about? All uh, right, I'll, I'll give you a quick quick summary. Because we only have nine listeners, and I'm pretty sure all nine of them have not seen Magruber. You know, and, and let me tell you, Will Forte is going to be happy about this because we're going to he's going to have nine new downloads of oh, that film. Yeah. Probably illegal downloads, but <laughs> he's going to have downloads. Uh, Magruba is a Saturday Night Live sketch, right? Made into a film, right? Uh, it's a, it's sort of like a bit of a throwback to the '80s. He's a uh, well, as the name would suggest, he's similar to MacGyver. Okay. Yep. Uh, where he um, he he's sort of like a, a what are they like a lone wolf, I guess, who's sort of like contracted by the government, I guess, to sort of like save sh- people. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck. So it's a real, it's a real strong story. Like you're really <laughs> selling this movie well. But let me you. tell you, I, I was one of those films that you know you saw a flicking channels, and I was flicking channels, and I saw Chris Jericho on there. I was like, uh, hey, a wrestlers in the film. I wonder if there's wrestlers in the film. I'm going to stop and just see where the fuck that's going. Yep. Dude, it turned out to be one of the best finds I've ever had. I've been I've been on your case about watching MacGruber for a long time okay. now. Okay, I, I might have to get around to MacGruber. Don't mind getting around it. It's brilliant. It's got it's got all the it's all got all the legends, the classics. It's got the Big Show. It's got Great Carly. It's got even the MVP dudes in it for a second. It's it's very funny. You and it's what's that bird's name? The real, she was really good for a minute. Bridesmaids. Uh, the blonde one, she's in it. No uh, idea. Though. Val Kilmer is in it. Okay, you've won me over. Val, Val Kilmer, Kilmer, Iceman. <laughs> one, is of, in one, the film. one of the more underrated Batmans. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the worst one. Val Kilmer yep. is in it. He's okay. very funny. Well, so you, you, look, you've won me at Val Kilmer. Have you got an honourable <laughs> mention, Steve? Your top three so far has been Life, Happy Gilmore, and MacGruber. Have you got yeah. an honourable mention? I got a, a million of them, but um, probably the one that and it's in our, it's in, it's in the start is uh, Coming to America. There we go. Coming to America <laughs> is. You've got me back over the line with Coming to America. Coming to America, he playing the you know him and Arsenio Hall play three or four characters in a each you know sexual chocolate is oh, brilliant. Sexual chocolate, baby. Sexual chocolate. Sexual chocolate, and then he just drops the mic. He's the original. That boy good. <laughs> that boy good is, and that's hilarious he goes I, and I sing that song to my uh, my daughter all the time and in the in the vein that he sings it okay so I leave <laughs> to the future thank you thank you uh, I sing it and, and she thought she finds that hilarious so um yeah, she, she hasn't been exposed on. to so many people yet, so you no. know, she still finds Dad funny. That's good. You know, why you she still finds Dad funny? Try to hold on to that. Well, that's not a bad list there, Steve. Well, I'm going to go with my three now. Number one, and this is one that uh, it took me a while to see. I didn't see it when it first came out in cinema. It took uh, for me to get on a, a plane overseas. And that's where I like to find a lot of gems. This is on, on, on flights. And Wedding Crashes. I absolutely love Wedding Crashes. It's that movie that I've seen it probably 50 times now, but then every time I watch it, there's something new on it that makes me yeah. laugh. The way they deliver a line, like the all-star cast, it's just, uh, and you know I'm a huge Vince Vaughn fan. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, I feel like it, once you see Vince Vaughn once, you've seen him 
a uh, hundred times. But he, know, he, he's very good at being Vince Vaughn. Like, yeah. It's, 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 it's good like, for him. It's <laughs> <laughs> been in a lot of work lately, has he? I haven't seen him in the last okay. 10, 12 years. This is the man that just defended Adam Sandler, so let's not <laughs> throw too much shade around, shall we, Steve? But it's just, I don't know, Like he does play the one character, but you know, so do a lot of actors. And if you're good at playing the one character, you can kind of make a career out of it. Sure. Which is going to go into my number two movie, yep. Notting Hill. Uh, what? <laughs> what the hell is that? Wait, we, we need that like, the record com- sound right now. What? We're talking about comedies that will change your shit. I don't know that was day. a comedy. It's funny. It's a romantic comedy, but it's a comedy. I used to have a, a group of housemates, like a bunch of boys I went to school with, and that was like our guilty pleasure. Once a month, we'd all get together oh, and watch it. It's a very funny the movie. Only guilty pleasure by the sounds. Of- That's dreadful. You know, maybe we made out a little bit. <laughs> Bit of no, circle work? It's just, Jesus. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, so you got, <laughs> got a uh, scheme? That's, 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 yeah. Okay, sorry, boys. Let's not judge Trust. anybody, but, you know, it's 2017. But Notting Hill was a great <laughs> movie. It's, it's it's one of those ones. It's a heartwarming movie. It's a romantic comedy, but it's very funny. And once again, it's probably falling in the same vein. <laughs> Hugh Grant gets away with just playing Hugh Grant oh, in every movie, please. which is what I enjoy. I like Hugh Grant. Can I just add quickly that... We got a little notepad on the side here, and um, we just use it as a quick bit of reference. And he wrote the letter N, and I was devastated. I thought he was going to say Norbert. No, this is way worse. <laughs> this is dreadful, man. I like Norbert. It's not that bad. You know when you go into a movie, you said Norbert, expecting it to be terrible, and then you're kind of pleasantly surprised. That's how I felt with Norbert. But Notting Hill was a genuinely oh, good movie. Wow, wait. You need to watch it back, Steve. If I was sitting there and watch it. it- Oh. If I sit back and watch MacGruber, you have to watch Notting Hill because it is a very, very good movie. It's, it's, okay, I'm half English. My mum's English. Roberts? Yeah, Julie Roberts. Oh. But I enjoy that English sense of humour, that English comedy, the banter, that sort of thing. I really enjoy that sort of stuff. So Notting Hill's going to be my number two. Oh. And number three, like I said, I've just gone from, you know, somewhat witty English comedy and I'm going to go complete opposite way. Yeah, Benny <laughs> Hill or something? <laughs> <laughs> number three, Talladega Nights. Oh, yeah. yeah. Talladega Nights. 100%. Is, and to me, it's the best Will Ferrell movie. It's just... It's oh, yeah? stupid. You oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Better Step Brothers? Step Brothers overrated. Oh, then what about what? No, nah, but... My list, not yours. <laughs> Don't be a list bully. That's my job. <laughs> Step Brothers is overrated. No. It's so overrated, Steve. Talladega Nights <gasps> is Will Ferrell's best... He's so mad right now. I've, my I've wife. Got, I've got him on the negative tip, and now what? he's just really angry. No, not, let's not bring wives into this. Because I've had seven. Um, <laughs> but Talladega Nights was just hilarious. Having, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the guy. Uh, for it. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sacha Baron Cohen. Sacha Baron yes. The his French character was great. You know, and the, the banter with the shake and bake, all that sort of stuff. And just some of the jokes that was thrown out there. But the, uh, <laughs> I'm not knocking the film, dude. Talladega Nights was a stout standard. That's beautiful. But does Cool Step Brothers overrated? Step Brothers, was, it fall into that vein of the movies I don't like. Funny bit, funny bit, funny bit, funny bit. That's End a very of funny movie. Bit, though. Yeah, it wasn't that great, Steve. Oh, I it's... watched it twenty times. I think it's great every time. You've got some really shit taste. I'm just saying that. <laughs> and yeah, my honourable mention is going to be your number one movie, Life. Life, yeah, good. I loved it purely because I don't know. You know, you you first see something you really enjoy, like same way I saw, I saw Wedding Crashers the first time on a plane. <laughs> loved it. Can't you say know, it. Like, I, I enjoyed watching Notting Hill with like we'd all sit around and you know, shut up, Steve. My list, not yours. Go fuck yourself. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I enjoyed sitting around. Like, it was like our tradition, you know. We'd get some junk food. Usually when we were hungover, it'd be a Sunday night, and all the boys would sit around and watch that movie. We loved it. It made us feel better when we were hungover. And Life, I just remember because it was one of those. It's one of the few movies I remember seeing at the drive-ins. Oh yeah. So that's why I'll always have a real, real soft spot for yeah. Life because. It, it was just, yeah, it was sitting there in the mates in the car and when you open the windows, a fair bit of smoke came out of the car. I'll leave it at that. But we just really enjoyed that movie. I mean, like every scene that was funny. I mean, it's one of those ones that, once again, you go back and watch it and you missed oh, yeah. about 20 of the great lines in it anyway. So yeah. that's why life will always be in this. That's my honourable mention. I'm going to give it to life. We both dropped Eddie Murphy in oh, our yeah, honourable mentions. He's done some great stuff, people, but he's done some really shit stuff, much like Adam Sandler. But we're going to leave it there. That's <laughs> not that <laughs> That's going to be our show for today, guys. Now, I'm going to do a bit of housekeeping. Please rate and review the show. Uh, subscribe to the show on iTunes. Leave us a five-star review because, you know, you love us and <laughs> we need nine five-star reviews for the nine <laughs> listeners. But just do your best, guys. Share it around. Share the Facebook page. 
And we really appreciate the, uh, the response we've had so far, guys. We appreciate all of you listening. So that's going to be our show for today, guys. For Speak Air 1 and saying goodbye. For Steve Burrows. Uh, I have not prepared anything. So, peace. <laughs> You fucking ruined the book end of the show, Steve. You are the worst. Subscribe, oh. please. <laughs> I'm getting a new host, guys. I'm getting a new co-host. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time. Peace. Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.